Yo, what is up guys, Shri Kanase here and in this video, I'm going to be going over a full Google Ads blueprint. So I noticed that I have a lot of videos on Facebook and I even have a Facebook Ads course by the way. The link is in the description if you want to get the course. But what I noticed is that I don't really talk much about Google Ads or provide like a full video on exactly Google Ads and like a free course. So I decided to make this video just based on Google Ads so you guys get a better understanding of how you should be using Google Ads because right now there is a lot of competition on Facebook and from the beginning of time the best entrepreneur has always been the one who has found different ways to keep the money coming in. When a platform gets super saturated it is your job to find other platforms which you can utilize to start getting more and more income. But before we jump into the specific ins and outs of Google Ads, I'm in my Google dashboard right here as you guys can see and I'm going to go ahead and refresh this so you guys know this is true and not some fake photo. So here we go, it's getting refreshed and there you go. Alright guys, so here you go, it should have loaded by now and the stats are still the same. These are currently all the campaigns that I have running for my niche store and this is not a general store by the way the, the campaigns are all getting run for my main niche store which I turned into a brand but as you can see the main thing that I want to show you guys is the conversion value and the cost for the conversion so this column right here the one above is the total amount meaning all the campaigns that I've run on this Google Ads account in the past 365 days that's what I have set the specific time range at and I'm going to reset this just so you guys can see that it is up to 365 days and here you go. So what I want to show you guys is the cost. So the total cost basically with all of the extra additions of the campaigns which are currently not running comes up to about $3,568.74. But the total conversion value that I've had for this Google Ads account in the past year and I didn't start running ads uh, directly in the past year I actually started right here in about June of uh, 2018 but as you can see since then I've made about thirty three thousand one hundred eighty five dollars and eighty cents just with Google Ads now you guys have to understand this is a search based platform this is not like Facebook ads where you just run advertisements and you increase the budget and it gets shown to more people no this is a search based platform meaning people have to be searching for your niche and the beginning time was spent get really figuring out exactly how to work around with Google Ads. As you can see, I was not making much sales. And in addition, this is a niche store, so people weren't really searching for my products as much. But later on, in about January, I got the hang of it, and the conversions went through the roof. And again, after the niche season has ended, the conversions are a little bit lower, but it's much better than what it was in the beginning. And in total, about $33,000 extra just through Google Ads. And if we find the ROAS, let's do that really quick, open up our calculator so we can see what the total ROAS is for Google Ads. So over here we can see that I spent about $3,568.74. But actually the first number that we want to input is the total conversion value. So let's do just that, $33,185.80 and then we divide that by the total cost which is 3,568.74 and there you go a ROAS of about 9.3. Now I don't know about you guys but I find it sometimes difficult to get a ROAS this high with Facebook ads and even though I've just made about $33,000 this is a lot more profit than I usually make with Facebook ads which is why Google ads is something you should be looking at right now. But now that we've gone over these numbers without wasting any more time, let's go into the Google Slides that I've created for you guys so we can go further into the specific strategies. So let's go ahead and do just that. All right, guys, so the $33,139 Google Ads Blueprint. And this is going to be a full A through Z blueprint, so stick till the end. And before I get into this, if this is the first time you're watching one of my Shopify videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below so you stay up to date with quality videos just like this one right here. But let's start right away. All right guys, so the overview of what we're going to be basically going over and exactly what Google Ads is. So again, Google Ads is a search platform. It works based on people searching for your product. You can't go after the customer. The customer has to come to you. It is very, very different from Facebook ads and a few things that we'll be going over in this PowerPoint, you'll see that you need to have different strategy when it comes to Google ads. But the main thing you need to keep in mind when using Google Ads is the search terms have much more value than the actual product. 
So it doesn't matter what you're selling on your Shopify store. It could be a phone charger, it could be a wireless printer, or it could be a pair of shoes. If people are not searching for those specific items, they're not going to sell, period. So in Google Ads, search terms have the most value even over the product. So that also means that you need to be focusing more on the search terms more than anything else for Google Ads. Now I know with Facebook Ads, it is the complete opposite. You need to be looking for those interesting products, products that can be found at Walmart, Target, etc. But with Google Ads, we completely ignore Walmart, Target, and Amazon and all of the other competition. The majority of the orders on your Shopify store when you start running Google Ads will be for the products that have the highest search volume. So let's say people are searching more for a wireless printer than for a product that you found on Facebook Ads, maybe a kitchen gadget. Your wireless printer is going to sell much, much more if you compete well with your competition, meaning you compete based on the product images, the description, etc. And those are really important with Google Ads. But in this case, the printer is going to sell the most. And when it comes to the specific store type regarding general store versus niche store versus one product store, as you can see, I run a niche store, but the niche store still does well with Google Ads. But the main thing that you need to be focusing on when it comes to a Google Ads Campaigns is a general store. If you already run a general store, it is much, much better for you compared to these other two options. And even niche stores could do much better if your niche is something that works well year round and people are searching for items year round. One product stores definitely will have a hard time getting results with Google ads unless a lot of people are searching for your specific product. But if you're completely new to Shopify and you don't even have any Shopify store running, then I would recommend that you start with the general store if you plan to use Google ads over Facebook ads. And I have a, actually a link for a Shopify free trial. It's in the description. But now that we've gone over the overview, let's look at the specific product research strategies. So before diving into specific methods, I want to go over a few tools that you should be using. The first one is the Keywords Everywhere tool. This is again a Chrome extension which you can download on Google Chrome. Just search for it on Google and download it to your Google Chrome account. What this extension is going to do is it's going to let you see how many people are searching for specific search terms on Google. So in fact, let's go ahead and go to a Google search really quick and show you guys exactly how you can use Keywords Everywhere search extension. All right, so I've opened up a search for just the printer and when I type in printer and just press space, you get to see these specific numbers right here followed by the slash and month. And this is what Keywords Everywhere Chrome extension does. It shows you the monthly search volume for each of these specific keywords. So as you can see, the search term printer wireless has a average monthly volume of about 1450 per month, while printer ink has 60,500 per month monthly searches. So what this tells me is that the people selling printer inks are going to be a little bit more well off when it comes to sales compared to someone selling something in the printer wireless search term base. But Google shopping ads are shown at the very top. As you can see, these ones are all Google shopping ads. And these are currently all shopping advertisements which are competing with each other. So this is where the Keywords Everywhere extension really comes into play. Another awesome tool to use, and I mentioned this in the PowerPoint, is Google Ads Keyword Research Tool. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what that is really quick once this finishes loading up. But to access that tool, all you have to do is just go to the tools at the very top, click on it, and then on the left under planning, you should see Keyword Planner. You want to click on that. But once it loads up, you want to click on the first option, which is find new keywords and basically type in any keyword for a product you want to research for. So in this case, we're just going to type in printer and press enter and just get started with that. As you can see, once it did load up, I got all of these specific columns right here, followed by all of these specific keywords. This is really helpful when doing research for Google Ads. The main reason why we're using these tools in the first place is because we want to use the most matching keyword, which is the most matching to our product, by the way, in our description and titles. And what this does is it pushes your listing to the very front if you do proper SEO. I'm going to speak more about SEO really soon, but this is exactly how you use the keywords everywhere and the Google Keyword Planner tool. Make sure the volume is above 500 for each of these specific keywords that you plan to use. And in fact, what I like to do is every time I find a keyword which is good and relates to my product really closely is record that keyword so that I can use it either in my title 
or in the description. So let's say for example, in this case, I was selling a HP printer. I would then take note of this title, even though it's for an ink, let's pretend that this said HP instant printer. I would take note of this keyword and save it somewhere, maybe on a Google doc, so that I can include this specific keyword inside my description. But just go through all of these keywords that pop up, make sure to also use the keywords everywhere tool and find these specific keywords which pop up, which have a monthly search volume of above 500 to take a note of and include in your description. It is really going to help you with your Google shopping ads. But let's go back and continue on with the specific methods. So method number one for product research is AliExpress flash deal. So let's go over to AliExpress. I already have it open, but what you want to do is at the very top, click on flash deals. This is where we're going to get an idea for products and do product research. So when it comes to Google ads product research, the method is actually fairly simple and you don't have to focus on any interesting product any product that has a wow factor, but what you want to be looking for is any product that does catch your eye. So let's go ahead and search through and see what we can find. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this, this product right here, which I see, which I personally think is a little bit cool because it looks like it's a light bulb camera, meaning a hidden cam. So once you find a specific product, and it can be in any category, by the way, you don't have to limit yourself to any specific category when it comes to Google ads. All you have to do is get a note, a quick idea of exactly what the product is. So one way to do that is to look at the title of the AliExpress listing and see if we can find any specific keywords which relate directly to this product. From the photo, what I can see is that this is a light bulb camera. So we're gonna do exactly that. We're gonna write that right here in the Google search. So light bulb camera, and I've already written this down. But as you can see, when I do type it up, and when you press space, what you can see is that all of these specific keywords pop up. Light bulb camera, Wi-Fi, light bulb camera, Home Depot. And you want to stay away from these specific keywords which have like a store in front of them, like Home Depot, Amazon, Target, etc. Take a note of these other specific keywords and make a list of that, basically save that down for later. But let's do that again really quick. So when we type in light bulb camera, we can see that right at the top, the first one is light bulb camera, which has 810 monthly searches. It matches our category, which states that we need above 500 monthly searches. So we can note this keyword down. The second keyword is light bulb camera Wi-Fi, which is a thousand per month monthly searches. Again, we can keep a note of these specific keywords. But as you can see, these keywords are getting traction. People are searching for them each month. Now I know 1,000 or 800 may seem like a lot, but honestly, it is not a lot of searches, especially when you have competition like this, not every single search is going to end up on your product page. So you wanna kind of be on lookout for that. Make sure there's a lot of additional keywords, five to 10 keywords specifically, with above 500 to 1,000 monthly searches. If you add those keywords up, they should have a total monthly search volume of above 10,000. If they do, then that is a good product you may wanna to add to your Shopify store. And again, you wanna include these specific keywords inside the description. But we can use this tool the same way we used it for the printer when it comes to the Google Ads Keyword Planner. Simply paste in the keyword right here, look through the specific keywords that pop up, see anything that relates to your product, and keep a note of them if the volume is what matches our category, which is above 500. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm not gonna go over this again because I went over it already for the printer keyword, but let's move on to method number two, which is Wanello.com. And this is another product research website I use personally for Facebook ads as well as Google ads, but for this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I use it for Google ads. So the first thing you're gonna have to do for Wanello is create an account. And the account is free, but once you do create it, you're gonna end up on this page. You wanna go ahead and go to trending. We want to look at trending products because these are the products which may be the ones people are starting to search more often on Google. And again, we apply the same technique we did on the flash deal for AliExpress on Wanello. Again, the product research method is so simple that sometimes you may think that you're not doing it right, but trust me, it is really simple and you do not wanna overcomplicate the method. Simply search through for interesting products that catch your eye, and once you do find something, you wanna search that up on AliExpress to see if there are any AliExpress suppliers that sell that product. So let's do a real quick search on Wanello, see if we can find anything. So that looks like it's a really good canvas photo, but 
I don't think you could do a good job of advertising that on Google. Your listing may get banned. But I'll meet you guys once I find something interesting, just so we can continue on with the tutorial. All right, guys, so I found a product. This is a Japanese lunchbox. And the next step that you would do is simply go on AliExpress and just type in the name of that product. So that's what we're going to do. It's a Japanese lunchbox. And just do a quick search and just sort by orders. So there we go. And we want to find something that is somewhat similar to this. It doesn't have to be exact, but just something we can possibly sell via Google ads. So again, you want to do a quick search on AliExpress, see if you can find something similar. And it does not look like there is anything specifically related to that, but that doesn't matter because with Google ads, we're competing based on mostly the price, the image quality and the description and how well you do SEO. So even if I didn't find the same exact product, what I would then do is simply look at the top selling product right here, which is this one and look at the price that it's getting sold for. So it looks like this product is about $15. That's the most expensive uh, lunchbox for this product. My next step would be to simply search up the keyword lunchbox or Japanese lunchbox on Google or use the Google AdWords keyword planner tool to search it up. What you want to be looking out for is see if you can sell it, this product at a profit. Anything above a 10 to $15 profit margin is good to go. So if there are other competitors on Google selling the same exact product or something similar for let's say $30, then you can do much, much better selling this product for $30 as well. Remember, you don't want to start a price war. With Facebook's, that's sometimes fine, but with Google, you're going to make this product not be a winner if you start a price war. So whatever the lowest prices of your competition, make sure to match that instead of trying to start a price war. But this is method number two, which is Vanello.com. The third one is Facebook feed search. I've made a lot of videos on Facebook feed search. For my previous Facebook ads tutorials, the link should have popped up in the top right. So I'm not going to really cover over that in this tutorial. And the same goes for these other two methods. I made videos on that specifically on eBay. I made one recently on how to use eBay to do product research. You want to use that same technique and then use the keywords everywhere Chrome extension or the keywords planner to search up those products. And the same goes for Dropshipping Center. I'll have the links for all of these videos in the description as well. So just make sure to check them out. But I want to move on to our next slide, which is going to be specifically keyword research. Now we covered product research. Now we're going to cover keyword research. I actually already kind of went over keyword research, but this is just a quick recap. You want to be making sure that you have over 500 searches per month for the product that you're trying to sell. And again, you want to be using the Chrome extension or the Google ads keyword planner to find those specific keywords. Again, SEO is super important when it comes to Google ads with Facebook ads. You didn't really pay attention much to SEO because you just wanted to create a nice video, a nice ad copy and get the ad up and running. But with Google ads, you want to focus more on the images that you have, the description that you write and how many times you use a specific keyword in the description. Again, I've made a video on proper SEO techniques. The link will be in the description. I know that's a lot of videos that I'm suggesting, but I've covered literally step by step all of these things, which will help you when it comes to Google ads. And if I covered them again in this video, you're going to have to be here for a few hours, but make sure to check them out. But the main thing that I want to mention is that whatever keywords that you use for the product, you want to include them five to 10 times in your description. And this is so that the Google search crawler correctly identifies your product with the specific category and identifies it with the product itself so that you can get not only sales through the Google shopping ad, but also through the search, which is at the bottom below the shopping ads. And if you have proper SEO, your shopping ad is easily going to be shown at the very beginning, meaning right in front of all of the other competition, which is going to help you sell more with your store. But again, this is just a quick recap. And the next slide is going to cover campaign setup. So how exactly should you be setting up your Google shopping campaign? There's a full A to Z tutorial on my YouTube channel, which goes directly from setting up your merchant center account to connecting Google shopping feed to your Shopify store. Again, the link is in the description, but the general layout for your Google shopping campaign is going to be directed towards United States. Remember 99% of the people that shop on Google shopping campaigns are in the U S. So you want to target us specifically in your shopping campaign. 
And when you're setting up your shopping campaign, you want to make sure that you're including the search partners. It is a great way to make extra money because Google Ads knows when to show your shopping campaign to your, these other specific search partners. It's just like setting your Facebook ads on auto placement. You want to let these platforms do majority of the thinking for you instead of narrowing it down yourself because the more decisions you let these platforms take, the better results that you're going to be getting. So make sure search partners is chosen and for the bidding strategy, you want to make sure that you choose maximize clicks. I normally used to recommend a bid of about a dollar, but right now a bid of 20 cents to 45 cents is working the best, especially as you saw earlier when I was showing my Google ads dashboard, that specific campaign and all the other ones were running at about 50 cent or 45 cent bidding. So started at those and the budget, Normally I would recommend $10 per day, but right now you want to start it off at $25 per day, but don't worry. You're not going to spend all $25 per day because of your bid limit. That's why we set the bid limit at much lower than we would normally do. And along with search partners, you want to be including search networks. Again, you want to keep the specific things that you tell Google very broad. Don't narrow it down too much because you're going to get all screwed up results. But now that we've gone over that and you have a shopping campaign running, the one thing that you want to keep in mind is this is not Facebook ads. You have to refrain yourself from touching your campaign every single day. I know if you're coming from Facebook ads or if you've been watching a lot of Facebook ads videos, people are going to say monitor your Facebook ad closely every single second of the day. I mean, forget about your social life. Forget about your family life. There's only going to be a Facebook ads life from now on. But in Google ads, you can start thinking about your family, your friends, etc. more often because patience is key with Google ads. You should definitely not be touching your campaigns every single day. And if this is the first time you're setting up your shopping campaign, do not touch it for the first learning period of seven days. Let it run the full seven days, which is the learning period and which is Google ba is basically trying to understand who to show your Google shopping campaign to, what your potential audience is, etc. But if you see that your shopping campaign is spending much more than what you have allocated for your budget and basically something that is out of your budget, you may want to consider lowering the bid from whatever you have by five cents lower. So if you had it at 40 cents, make it 35 cents. So it spends a little bit lower. But other than that, do not touch anything else. The main optimization happens after seven days and that's when you want to start making keywords negative for all specific keywords for products which crossed your profit margins. So let's say I was selling a printer and the printer I'm, I have a profit margin of about $50 and by the end of the seven days I noticed that the Google Ads has spent over $50, about $55 on the wireless printer and it has not gotten me any sales. You want to go ahead and exclude that product from your Google shopping campaign and make it a negative product. In addition, you want to exclude all the keywords which were related to that product from your shopping campaign. Google Ads does not spend any more money on it. And if you have any type of questions or concerns regarding this slide, just comment down below and I'll be sure to help you guys with that. But continuing on, the final thing that I'd like to cover is search campaigns. Along with Google shopping campaigns, you want to have search campaigns running just for extra authority. Now think of the search campaign as a retargeting campaign. And what I want to do is show you guys exactly on my Google ads account, the ROI of God's and for my search campaign. But this is basically people who are searching for your store on Google. So let's say you have some Facebook ads running or even Google ads running by now by following this tutorial and a customer types something up. Let's say for example, a wireless printer, that's their keyword. They type it up and they see your listing either on Google or Facebook but something comes up in their life which refrains them from continuing on with their purchase. But what they have done is they have taken into account the name of your store. So they remember your store's name now. And the next time they want to think about purchasing from your Shopify store to get that printer, what they could do is simply search your store name onto Google. And if you have these search campaigns running, your ad is going to pop up right at the top with the specific section right below it which says sponsored. And what this does is it's going to add more authority to your Shopify store because as a customer, they're going to be like, wow, there's an ad running for this store, which means that this store is legit. And this is sort of like retargeting in a sense for all those people who want to purchase from you specifically, but something comes up and they can't do it the first time around. The second time around, they get to see your search campaign and go ahead with the purchase. Again, I made a complete tutorial on this and the link is going to be in the description. 
but this is the general idea of how it is for Google Shopping Ads. But as promised, let's go ahead and go on to my Google Ads dashboard to show you guys how good a search campaign works. So let's go ahead and go over and here we go. So the search campaign which I have running for this Shopify store is this one right here which is running at $20 per day. And again, the specific time range is the past 365 days. So in the past 365 days, I've gotten 12,523 impressions, meaning people have seen my ad for the, my company and I've gotten about half of them as clicks. So 6,552, the click through rate is crazy high, 52%. So over half, average cost is 19 cents and I've spent only $1,249.21. In return, I've gotten 978 conversions, meaning purchases, for a whopping value of $22,380. So the majority of the sales came from the company search campaign, basically people who saw my shopping ad, but something came up in their life and the second time they decided to search my company name up, purchase from there. So as you can see, Google Ads is, provides crazy high ROAS, even compared to Facebook ads, and it is something that you should definitely be implementing with your Shopify stores. But that is all for this video. If you found any type of value in this video, don't forget to hit that like button and I'll see you guys next time.